What's going on guys? Welcome back to another movie recap, reaction, and review. I'm A, we're going to be reviewing the movie Teeth. This is a movie about a girl named Dawn who discovers that she has a curse, an adaptation, vagina dentata, a condition where she has teeth downstairs. Oof. If you enjoy the video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you're new. And without further ado, let's get started. The movie, the movie starts with the O'Keefe family sitting under the sun. Bill and his wife are watching the children play in the pool. Brad does not accept Dawn as his sister. While their father Bill is angry at Brad's behavior, Kim, the wife, asks him to go easy on the child. The step-siblings sit in the pool and Brad shows his genitals to his sister and asks her to show him hers. Okay, what the what the heck is wrong with this kid? Suddenly, the couple hears him shriek and they see a cut on his finger. This is how the movie gives us a head start about what's to follow. Later, Dawn is a teenager and she's the spokesperson for a Christian abstinence group called The Promise. The group encourages young boys and girls to keep their virginity safe until they find someone who could be their partner for life. Dawn calls it a gift. With the promise band around the fingers of all members of the promise, she asks them to unwrap their gift when someone places a wedding ring on their finger in return for their hand. On the day of her seminar, she meets Toby through her friend Gwen and Phil. Dawn and Toby instantly form a connection and seem attracted to each other. Per Dawn's home, her mother is ill and her father takes care of her. Her brother Brad has grown up to be a loud teenager. Dawn is bullied at her school for being the spokesperson for the promise. However, her school administration is orthodox and their teacher is uncomfortable talking about the female private parts. The state's board has ordered the diagram to be covered in all course books. While Dawn seems unbothered by the decision, Ryan questions the teacher and highlights the disparity. He asks how learning about female privates is different from learning about male privates. Dawn volunteers to answer and say that females are different because they have an inherent modesty which is part of their nature. While the entire class makes fun of her, Toby speaks up for her. Gwen, Phil, Dawn, and Toby go to the movies after school, and in the theater, both Dawn and Toby get drawn to each other after watching others make out. Oh, I got a bad feeling about this now. Brad finds a loophole to the promise and only performs butt intercourse with his girlfriend, who meanwhile the four go to see a lake that has a cave nearby. The cave is a famous makeout spot for couples. Don and Toby sit together, and Toby asks her if anyone has touched her down there. Kind of a weird question, Toby. She instantly refuses and asks Toby if he was a virgin. It's revealed that he had intercourse a year and a half ago, and he was still dealing with its guilt. Don consoles him and tells him that he is stronger now than ever because he has experienced the danger of first-hand sex and managed to get resolved. One night, while she gets ready to sleep, she fantasizes about marrying Toby and sensually touches herself. She immediately regrets her actions and reminds herself about the promise of staying pure. The next day, Dawn confesses that she had impure thoughts about Toby, and he says the same. Even though they enjoyed their time together, both of them agreed to maintain a distance from each other. Back at home, Dawn reads about Medusa, the goddess who turned men into stone. She also overhears her brother having an argument with his girlfriend about butt intercourse. While his girlfriend screams that it hurts, he refuses to change his ways and questions her love for him. Dawn tries to have a conversation with her brother, but is thrown back with his rude behavior. She visits the lake, aka the makeout spot again, and calls Toby for a swim. They tell each other that they had been imagining each other without clothes and have a great time swimming together. They kiss each other and agree it does not feel wrong to them. Moments later, Toby makes advances on Dawn, and she stops him to remind him about the promise of purity. They then swim towards the cave and find a cozy corner with a blanket. They wrap it around themselves and share a few kisses when Dawn gets uncomfortable and suggests they return. Toby, however, does not want this and he starts forcing himself and pushes her head against a rock. Don falls unconscious while Toby takes advantage of the situation. But as he does so, he suddenly shrieks in pain. Don is confused with everything happening around her and notices blood in his hands. Toby cries in pain and sees the tip of his hot dog has fallen to the ground. Toby quickly leaves the cave screaming. Don is overwhelmed with fear, especially after seeing the piece of hot dog next to her. She calls out to Toby, but after getting no response, she dresses up and goes back home. That night, she has nightmares about Toby and vents her frustrations on the drawings pasted on her wall. The next day, she's invited to speak at The Promise for the first time and seems nervous about the speech itself. She goes on stage but is unable to speak. She's confused and stutters about the session. The incident moves her and she seems all over the place. Ryan, who always liked Dawn, reaches out and asks her for a date after driving to her house. Dawn says that it was funny, but it disheartens Ryan. He thinks about it after passing her home and takes a U-turn to turn back and talk to her. He knocks on the door and is greeted by Brad. He punches Ryan in the face and asks him to step out of his property. Dude, this brother's such a jerk. Meanwhile, Dawn cycles back to the lake and finds Toby's car still parked there. She swims back to the lake and is horrified when she sees Toby's hot dog is still there and is covered in flies. She then stands on top of the hill and throws away her purity band. On returning home, she keeps 
the page from her textbook in the sink to remove the sticker from the vulva's diagram. The sticker comes off without tearing the page, and Dawn is shocked seeing the detailed diagram of the female genitalia for the first time in her life. She then reaches out to the internet in search of vaginal mutation. She finds out that the toothed vagina occurs in many different cultures around the globe. The story says that the hero must battle with the toothed creature, for example, the woman, to break her power. She finds out that this mythical condition called vagina dentata occurs in many different cultures around the globe. Horrified upon reading all this, she quickly reaches out to a gynecologist. And I don't know about you guys, but I'd be pretty freaked out if I was her too. Dawn gets an appointment under the name of Miss Cobb and tells the gynecologist it was the first time she had visited a clinic. She tells him that she wanted to be checked to ensure that her body was not going through any adaptations. The doctor initially tells her that she's going through womanhood. He assures her that no judgment will be made about her sexual life and carries on with the examination. He applies lubricant and inserts his hand inside her. Under the pretext of observing her, he touches her and thrusts his hand inside. He asks her to breathe through the pain and suddenly feels something clutching his fingers. They both hear a clench sound and he realizes his hand is stuck inside. He tries to free his hand, but after much difficulty, he removes it with a painful sound, only to suffer more pain and seeing his fingers have been cut from his hand. Dawn screams out in fear as both are horrified with what just happened. The doctor screams that vagina dentata is real. Dawn quickly runs out of the room and flees the scene. While Dawn cycles back home, a police car passes by and she thinks for a moment that it might be for her. Next, she watches a jeep cross by and mistakes the driver to be Toby. Being reminded of him, she then visits the lake to look for him. There, she finds out that a scuba team has retrieved his dead body from the lake. There are detectives and police present at the scene, and she is heartbroken to see Toby's dead body. She gets back home with overwhelming guilt and notices that her mother has collapsed on the floor. Her brother is busy having intercourse with his girlfriend, so he could not hear his mom due to the loud music in his door. Dawn wakes up at the hospital with a nightmare about the chomping sound. Her father sends her back home and asks her to take a rest. Dawn returns home to her brother and his girlfriend again, arguing at the same topic. She reaches out to Ryan and breaks down in front of him. She tells him that her mother is in the hospital. She also tells him that she needs to turn herself into the police station. She tells him that she's killed someone. He freaks out but tries to support her. She tells Ryan that she had nearly killed two people, and it was all because of her teeth downstairs. She cries in his arms and he tries to console her and calm her down. Later, she relaxes in a bathtub, and Ryan offers her medicine to calm her down. He says that her mom takes it to calm her nerves. He prepares the room with candles and puts on soothing music, and opens up a bottle of wine for both of them. When Dawn steps out of the bath, she looks for her clothes and informs him that she wants to go to the police. Ryan tells her that the pills might make her a bit fuzzy and she should go to the police the next day. He had arranged a date that was Dawn's dream and gave a toast addressing her as the smartest and prettiest girl he has ever known. Dawn then spills wine on herself and leans on to Ryan, who assures her that he's there for her. He then goes on top of her and wants to have intercourse. She gives him consent and he continues. They end up having great intercourse that ends with a beautiful smile. Meanwhile, the doctors find a rare structure in the penile stump of Toby body. They are confused about what the structure exactly is. It seemed like a tooth belonging to sharks or eels, but their tests revealed that it belonged to a human. Meanwhile, the guy oncologist undergoes surgery, sewing his fingers back on his hand, refusing to tell the surgeon what chomped them off in the first place. Don gets into another round of intercourse with Ryan and finds out that he had a bet with his friends if he could have intercourse with her or not. Don is infuriated from hearing Ryan make fun of her sacred abstinence. She says that he never believed that it was sacred, and it further angers her. The next moment, they both hear a clench, followed by Ryan bursting out with pain. Don gets up to leave and notices that Ryan's hot dog has also been cut, just like Toby's. Without any guilt, she walks away and reaches out to the hospital. The nurse asks her to sit down as she had something to tell her. Back at home, Brad's father asks him to leave the house, and Brad accuses Kim of making his father do that. Parallel to this, Ryan undergoes surgery where they try to sew his hot dog back together. Brad and Bill get into a fight, and Brad admits that he is angry with his father after marrying Don's mom and made her his sister. He confesses that he loved her while his dog overpowers his father, who was scared enough to say that Don loves him too. Bill goes back to the hospital with Melanie, and they find out that Kim has passed away. Melanie apologizes to Dawn and tells her that she and Brad heard her mother screaming, but Brad said that she does that all the time. Dawn is struck with revelation. She heads back home, dresses up, and enters Brad's room. She then seduces him, and for the first time, he appears nervous in front of her. He asks her why she has decided to do this, and she asks him if he was scared. He flips her hair back while she resists and signals him to have intercourse with her. He takes a moment and penetrates her while telling her that they both always knew that this is how things would turn out to be. Dawn looks him straight in the eyes, and they both hear a clench sound. He then realizes what just happened and feels tremendous pain. Brad is finally able to pull away and sees that his hot dog had been chomped off. He wonders 
where it went and sees that it fell from between Dawn's legs when she stands up. He orders his pet dog mother to go get her, but instead, the hungry dog eats the hot dog. Dawn leaves the room as Brad begs her to stay, screeching with pain. The movie ends with Dawn asking for a lift after her bicycle breaks down in the middle of the road. A car stops by and she gets in. The driver, who looks like a perverted old man, locks the door and looks at her greedily. He smacks his lick and hangs his tongue out looking disgusting AF. After constantly trying to unlock the door, the movie ends with Dawn giving the old man a seductive look. And that is the end of the movie. Okay, you guys enjoyed this movie recap, reaction, and review? Hit that like button if you did, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next video.